Alrighty, hi everyone. Welcome to Hot Topic Tuesday. April and Trish with you today. And today we are going to do a fun one. Um, so the month of October, we're actually ending October going into November, but October has been all things women's hormones. And today we are going to do a fun one, debunking hormone myths, some mm -hmm. common misconceptions about women's hormones in general. And Trish and I thought that we could kind of have fun with this one. Um, so without further ado, we will kind of go ahead and start. The first one, the first myth that um, we have or we tend to hear a lot is hormone mm -hmm. balances only happen during menopause. That is totally incorrect. <laughs> um, hormone imbalances can occur actually at any age due to factors like stress, diet, lifestyle, or even gut health issues. Um, things like estrogen dominance or cortisol imbalances can actually affect women in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, not just in perimenopause and menopause. So that is completely untrue. That is a myth. Number two, the uh, second myth is weight gain is unavoidable due to hormones. Um, that is false. Uh, weight gain, a, a lot of times, and oftentimes I see, and Trish and I will see it in our community, you know, it's almost like you enter into perimenopause and it's like you have to accept, you know, the 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 weight gain, you know, as as a, a factor or um you know, as a symptom of, okay, I'm entering into this realm of life, you know, this it's just part of it. That is not true. Um, while hormones do play a role in metabolism and fat storage, weight gain is actually not inevitable. Um, many factors, including our diet, physical activity, and sleep can influence how hormones impact weight. So uh, being sure that we're managing stress and prioritizing sleep, for example, can help regulate hormones like cortisol, which is actually a big driver to um, a big contributor to weight gain in general. Um, the next myth is Hormone replacement therapy, HRT, is dangerous for all women. <laughs> that is incorrect. Um, HRT is actually, and we talked about this last week, and I, I do have a small pet peeve with women going to their doctors and getting HRT just based on symptoms alone. I, I have a big issue with that. You know, that is why I am a big proponent of testing and not guessing. You know, test and see exactly what you're deficient on. And then see what you need before, you know, actually going into hormone replacement therapy. But it's not a one size fits all solution, but it also is not harmful. Um, for some women, it can be a helpful tool to manage symptoms of menopause. And the key is individual individualized care and working with a practitioner like myself and Tricia, who can understand and how to safely use HRT based on your personal um, health history, and also your test results. Um, the next one is the myth, low libido is normal with age and can't be changed. I'm going to say, I think, <laughs> I'm going to say, I think this is a huge myth that a lot of males have around women aging. And I find it so annoying. Um, a lot of males think that it's inevitable, you know, women are going to reach a certain age and their libido completely disappears. <laughs> that is a myth. Uh, low libido isn't an unavoidable consequence of aging. Um, hormone, hormone imbalances, stress, and lifestyle factors can actually impact the libido, but adjustments in diet, stress management, and addressing hormone health can actually support a healthier libido at any age. Um, the next one. So, so we totally debunked that, you know, our libido might be low due to other factors, but that's, it's, it's not a death sentence. It's, it's, it's not the norm. Um, and then we have hormone testing isn't necessary, isn't necessary until menopause. Um, that's the next myth. Now, that is absolutely untrue. Uh, regular hormone testing actually can be very helpful for identifying imbalances early. Um, testing can provide insights on stress levels, menstrual cycle issues, and even gut health, allowing for preventative care instead of reactive care during uh, perimenopause. And I say this all the time to my clients, like, 
let's take a proactive approach rather than a reactive approach. You know, and if you're if you're having any symptoms whatsoever, like periods, your your menstrual cycle has become irregular. You all of a sudden things have shifted where it's heavier, it's lighter, it's shorter, it's longer. Your PMS is is worse. Your hair is thinning, sleep disturbances, anything like that would highly suggest having your hormones tested um, just to be sure. Um, and Trish is going to take over the next uh, or the last fun fun myths that we have. Hello. I'm so sorry. I I told April, I was like, oh, I'm kind of having this little cold and this cough. Of course, we start right on Zoom and I'm like, oh, I'm dying. I'm so glad I muted. You would have heard like literally the worst coughing ever. So hopefully all good. And of course it happened. Like I've been pretty fine all day, actually. Um, okay. So number, well, whatever we're on here, we've got birth control solves all hormonal imbalances. Oh my gosh. You will see this one a lot. And we see this one a lot. And I think that it was probably more common of a practice, you know, many years ago to go in and you're a teenager, maybe you're having horrible, awful periods. And I think that was definitely kind of a fix that a lot of practitioners will do. Um, but birth control, while it may alleviate some symptoms, it's usually just regulating things. So you're not going to have the highs and the lows, the ebbs and the flows that are usually causing the issues, but it definitely doesn't address the root cause of the imbalances. And it it can regulate periods. So I think that's also a false sense of security. A lot of people are like, oh, well, my period's regular. Everything must be okay. But again, it's not really getting those underlying issues. Like there could be PCOS going on. There could be adrenal symptoms. There could be a thyroid imbalance. There could be a, a gut health issues. A lot of other things can be happening. And, you know, while birth control can kind of mask a lot of those things, it's usually not going to be getting to that root cause. And that's something that, you know, with further questioning, with further testing and kind of following somebody and, you know, trying out some things, we can probably probably help figure out a little bit. All right, next one. Estrogen is the only important ho hormone for women's health. Well, if you watched last week and we talked about progesterone, we know that not to be true. Um, estrogen is significant for sure. We do have the other hormones like um, progesterone that we talked about last week. We have cortisol. We have testosterone, which is also important for women. And those all play essential roles in our energy. They play a role in mood. As we talked about last week, progesterone is a big one to help stabilize, stabilize mood and help with anxiety and sleep um, and even, even our skin health. So we have, you know, a balance of kind of everything in there and they're is a purpose for all the hormones we have going on. So balancing these hormones is definitely key for just overall well-being and overall optimal health. All right, next one. Symptoms like hot flashes and brain fog and weight loss resistance and all of these other ones that we hear, they're just, you just gotta deal with it. Just part of life, right? No, these symptoms, they are common. We see them, we, we've we experienced them, we see them all the time. They don't have to be kind of like the libido. It doesn't, this is not the end all be all. This isn't how it has to be. Um, they don't just have to be like, okay, this is part of aging. This is part of getting older. They're definitely signals to our body that there probably are underlying imbalances. Um, and we can take so many steps through lifestyle, through diet, through sometimes we might need some supplementation if we're not hitting it really well with diet, with movement, with stress management, with sleep. We can take very, very actionable steps that can reduce or eliminate a lot of these symptoms. So while common, I wouldn't say that they're they're normal. And I love that we're talking about this so much more across all platforms, because I think it's just not something that we have to just go ahead and accept again, kind of like, you know, you're going to get older and you're going to have hot flashes and you're not going to sleep well, and you're not going to be able to lose weight and you're not going to want to have sex. <laughs> we don't need wow. to. Yeah. We don't need to do, do that anymore. For sure. There's lots of things we can do to help. All right. This is going to be the last one. So this is a big myth too, that there's a quick fix for a hormonal imbalance. And hormone, your hormonal health is a very complex. 
Um, there's no magic pill. There's no magic potion. Um, there's usually not just one thing at play. There's usually quite a few things at play. So really the best bet is to just make the sustainable lifestyle changes that you can make. So nutrition, sleep, stress, those are huge. Energy intake, huge. Um, nutrient status, huge. Um, those Managing those things are definitely essential for hormone balance. And say you even do kind of find a, a little fix there, you still need those things. You know, if you're taking HRT or if you're doing a specific protocol or taking some new supplementation, you still need, um, you know, the, the lifestyle factors, the habits, the behavior changes, um, stress management, sleep and nutrition, those still have to be there or whatever you're doing to support your hormones um, probably won't be effective long-term. So I think that's all. Anything else to throw? No, I'm just curious, anybody watching, if you were had a misconception about any of these myths and assume, because I know a lot of them, like Trisha and I were saying, the, the weight gain, the hot flashes, the low libido, you know, it's just kind of like, oh, just got to suck it up and deal with it. You know, so just yeah. curious if anybody watching, if, you actually have thought a lot of these myths were actually true, but right. with that being said, or that you did have to accept them. Exactly. Or what exactly. have you noticed that has been most effective in helping manage them too? That too. So that being said, hopefully this was helpful and we will see y'all next week. Bye everyone.